please watch the following video. It is entitled, Go Teaching Them. Everyone who claims to be a Christian, and has dedicated himself to Jehovah God, must not only preach, but he must be able to teach. We must go into the homes of the people and teach them what the Bible says. We needed a book that could be used effectively in conducting Bible studies. One that would cover the basic doctrines and truths. Many years ago, in the Bethel dining room, after the noon meal, Brother Knorr read off a list of 15 to 20 brothers' names who were to report at his office immediately. And they were told to write a new study book using simple, everyday language, just as they would present basic Bible truths to someone at the door. Well, within months, that book was written, printed, and released as Let God Be True. What we're getting now is a little miniature film or segment being shown to Jehovah's Witnesses at their 2020 annual meeting titled Go Teaching Them. The purpose of this segment is to whet the appetite for a new teaching tool that will be released. But to build up anticipation, they're going back in time and they're talking about previous iterations of this book because the strategy that Jehovah's Witnesses have always employed when it comes to attracting new converts is to make people sit through Bible studies. In order to become a Jehovah's Witness, you need to agree to a Bible study. In order to have a Bible study, you need something to study. You would think it would be the Bible. <laughs> And Jehovah's Witnesses would argue that it is the Bible that you're studying. It's just that, well, we need another book to tell us what the Bible really says. In other words, we need a book that's going to put the Jehovah's Witness spin on the Bible because you're not going to find the Jehovah's Witness spin just by reading the Bible on its own terms. Because it turns out, when you look at things objectively, that there's a lot of things that Jehovah's Witnesses do that you won't find in the Bible. Anyway, Jehovah's Witnesses need a tool. They've always needed a tool or some kind of book to indoctrinate people into joining. And here we get a story about how one of the first attempts at this tool came to be the let god be true book if i were in the bunker i would be able to just swivel round <laughs> i have two different versions of it on my bookshelves back in the bunker which i don't have access to at the moment but it isn't it interesting that in relating the story of how the let god be true book came to be Robert Siranko, who's a governing body helper, lets slip that there wasn't necessarily a governing body pulling the strings at that time. After the noon meal, Brother Knorr read off a list of 15 to 20 brothers' names who were to report at his office immediately. Brother Knorr read off a list of 15 to 20 brothers' names who were to report to his office immediately. Isn't that interesting? We've just had earlier in the annual meeting, Tony Morris jumping up and down trying to persuade Jehovah's Witnesses that there's always been a governing body. There's always been one going as far back as the apostles, but apparently as recently as the Let God Be True book wasn't really a governing body, was it? It was Brother Nor. It was a David Miscavige-style presidency. These brothers weren't asked to report to the governing body conference room. They were to report to Brother Noor's office. And you even see there a depiction of them all huddled round while Nathan Noor gives them 
directions. He is the president. He's pulling the strings. At this time in Watchtower history, there was no governing body. It was only when the 1970s came along, and even then halfway through the 1970s, that the governing body went from concept to what we think of today, namely a group of men who collectively control almost all aspects of the lives of Jehovah's Witnesses to the point of being able to control what types of life-saving medicine Jehovah's Witnesses accept or refuse. Still, some struggle to finish this and the even more detailed Impossible to Lie book and to make progress. By the late 1960s, a book was needed that got right to the point. They called it the Blue Bomb, and it was a game changer. Game changer. It was written in a simple, clear, and a pointed way so that any sincere reader could understand it. By the early 1980s, the field needed something new. Could a book be produced at the same level as the Bible Stories book, but with the information presented in the Truth book? I had no Bible studies at all. Now I have three and a fourth one ready to start. Thank you. Only a decade later, the world had changed. In some lands, so many wanted to study that they were put on a waiting list. Other lands faced a different problem. Somehow we dilly and dally with some of our students. Takes us years to bring some into the truth, and we wonder why. Maybe this book, with its pointed truths, will open their minds and their hearts to see. The Live Forever book helped me to love Jehovah, but the Knowledge book helped me to make the decision to serve Him. Still, we needed a book that not only sped up disciple-making, but also touched the heart. This book has an instant appeal that quickly draws householders into a conversation. Some are calling it the gold nugget. It was like having a bombshell in our hands. It really touched the heart and it helped bring many into the truth. I found answers to all my questions in just one book. This book was sent from God the best teaching tool I have ever been privileged to use. We thought this was the book and the only book and that there never could be another. So I've sped up this video, as you can see there, you've not been watching the video as it's shown during the annual meeting, just to save time. I've been switching to where it starts talking about the next book and then the next book, and then the next book. And it's fascinating to watch it sped up like that, because if you watch the full video, what you're getting is they will introduce the book, they'll give you the details on the screen, and then they'll give you anecdotes about how amazing it was. And then they'll move on to the next book. But when you speed it up, hopefully I'm not the only one, <laughs> who is seeing effectively a new light merry-go-round where new books are just released and everyone thinks they're brilliant. Oh, this is a bombshell. This is a blue bomb. <laughs> this is a game changer. Oh, this is so much better than what we had before. This is a gold nugget. This is simple. This is pointed. But actually we could probably do with something that's even more simple and even more pointed and even more of a bombshell. And they just have to keep releasing book after book after book. Again, if I were in my bunker, <laughs> I'd be able to show you all of the various publications that the organization has released over the years. I mean, here we're talking about Bible study aids. But the reason why they're constantly having to release book after book after book is not because the world's changing, it's because the religion's changing. 
It's because they're constantly having to reinvent their teachings. I can remember studying the Live Forever book. And in the Live Forever book, you will find the teaching that the generation of people who witnessed the events of 1914 would not die before Armageddon came. That was the teaching in the Live Forever book. Obviously, that didn't come to pass. And so the knowledge book came around and then the Bible teach book replaced the knowledge book and quietly, without any fanfare, they snuff out these embarrassing teachings that they once had. They had the same problem with the blue book, the truth that leads to eternal life, to the extent where there are actually two versions, two editions of that book. There's the 1968 version, which was just before 1975, and said some embarrassing things about 1975. And then you have the 1981 version of the blue bombshell, or whatever they were calling it, which quietly did away with those embarrassing references to 1975, but still promoted the generation teaching, which again has also since been ditched. So again, just a new light merry-go-round. They're trying to build anticipation for the new tool, the next in this long line of essentially failures. Failures because they're promoting a lie, they're promoting a belief system that's ultimately wrong. And in doing so, they are inadvertently exposing for all to see just how man-made and contrived the whole thing is. Because if it were really true, if it were really the truth, would you really need to release a new book every few years? Would you really need to find a new way of teaching people this thing that has always been true? Of course not. One book will do if it's really true. It's only if it's a load of nonsense <laughs> that keeps changing all the time that you need this new light merry-go-round. 